place. I was raised younger, and then, like walking in with Raekwon, and everyone knows, like, yo, that's Ray's guy. You know what yeah, I mean? That's yeah. powerful. You know it what I mean? Helps a and, lot. It, it helps a lot. You know what I mean? So, um, I just think uh, it was one of those things where money could have really helped that situation. You know what I mean? And and the right out, you know, just spending it in the right places would have really helped that situation. It, mm-hmm. it just. It just didn't work out, man. Like, I don't know. Uh, in hindsight, hindsight's twenty twenty. you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I could look back and be like, oh, I could have done this. And, and then, like, even, for example, like, Camel, like, for him to come here and be like, oh, uh, if if that was me, I would have whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, like, I'll give you an analogy. It's like, um, like we're NCAA players, right? Okay. Okay. We're NCAA players. We play March Madness. We finish March Madness. It's draft time. Mm-hmm. I get drafted. You don't get drafted, Right. I play in the league for a couple of games, but I sit on the bench. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I never, I wasn't, a, I didn't ball. I sat on the bench a little bit. You never even went to the league. You don't really get to talk about the guy that went to the league. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like that was a little out of line. I don't know. I don't want to circle back, circle back to that. Well, but I don't know. That that bothered me still. I was a little no, disappointed. No, well, the that. analogy makes sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, but yeah, like Ray, Ray, super, um, Ray's a Ray's a dope guy. You know what I'm saying? Like Ray. Ray's a uh, really good big homie, and I'm forever like indebted to that guy just because he taught me like he taught me so much. Like mm. the going to the school of Raekwon was priceless. Like you know, essentially that's what I went to. Yeah. I went to the University of fucking Wu Tang. Raekwon was my professor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like I got to learn from from one of the best in the game. Your favorite rapper's favorite H two O J D ever blaze shit. Turn it up, get wasted. Let's face it. But. I just feel like we dropped the ball. We both dropped the ball in a lot of little situations. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, I just feel like the, the support on this side um, wasn't necessarily there. You know what I mean? And it, it just made it difficult for us to to get where we wanted to go. So the project never actually came. I never out got there. to. I never got to put out a project through Ice Age Two. Yeah. I literally put out no handouts. Um, we were working on my debut album mm-hmm. at the time, and like I was in the states, I was in New York. You know, you had the studio in Jersey. I was working, working, yeah, working, you're making videos, and doing making songs videos together. and stuff yeah. like that. You know what I mean? I was working, working, working. I was overnight staying in the studio, bird bats in the studio, trying to bang out an album, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it just mm-hmm. like you know there was a lot of little things that happened. And like again, I, I haven't spoke to Ray since. Um, since I left, so like I had left the studio, it, I left the studio in New York, and like that was kind of my last when I was like done. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'd hit, I'd hit my point or whatever it was. Just mentally, I wasn't there anymore. Mm. It just the creative juices weren't there anymore. I just yeah. felt like it, it started to feel like a job. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah Like yeah. music's never felt that way for me. You know what I mean? So I just hit a roadblock, and um, once I came back, I was like, okay, you know what? I, I just I don't want to do this anymore. You know mm. what I mean? And and uh. I haven't spoke to him since, so just out of respect for him, like I really, when we have our chance to have that conversation, because we were really close, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you're with a guy every day for two years, you know what I'm saying? You're wow. sleeping on a bus together and this and that. You know, I was with Ray every single day, you yeah. know what I mean? 63, so, tor- 63 tor- uh, Well, the 63 dates was one thing, but like yeah. I was literally like, okay, yo, like, uh, yo, Era, um, we're in New York, like, come pull up, blah, 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 I'm there in New York, I stay at your crib, I met his moms, I stayed at his mom's oh, wow, house, you wow. know what I mean? Like, like we were close, the you know what I mean? Like his brothers, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. his brothers and stuff, like, so for me, it, it was just deeper than, than like, just the music, you know what I mean? Rapture, and like, I just yeah. felt like, I felt like on like a big homie level, like he wasn't there for me for some stuff, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and like I said, like when me and him have the opportunity to speak, Maybe I could be more forthcoming and like interviews and stuff like that, but yeah, just yeah. out of respect for him, like I, I want us to have that one to one. You know what I mean? So, so um, yeah. not to interrupt you, but now with the contract, mm-hmm. right? Because I know you don't want to talk too much about. No, we could. Yeah. Did you have a hard time getting out the contract with him? Um, I don't. I don't. That's still kind of in limbo, I guess. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's a thing. Anymore, it's been a minute, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, if yeah, if yeah. he wants to, he can pursue that still, but like... Uh, well, let's say now, okay, because you got new music, you know, as far yeah, as... Yeah, like, I'm not really tripping on that. Right, because like, you, you you might have put out one of those new bangers that I heard in the private SoundCloud and it yeah. might go that's fucking where, millions that's where millions. His, If that's where his heart really is, then he you know he's going to do what he got to do, you mm. know what I mean? But I... I would hope by now that that's not really where it is. Yeah, you know what I mean? If that's yeah. what you wanted to do, you've had a, it's literally been five years, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think at this point in time, it's more um, it's more just us having that conversation as men, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And just really just hashing out whatever, 
was left because you know like i like i'll tell you like one of my regrets in that whole situation is like i did an interview um with like i think it was a vice or something like that and like you know i was really upset about a lot of things because he had went to breakfast club and like um they asked him about me and like at the time i was juno i just finished doing the junos like i was on the juno uh like i was the opening presenter for the Juno Awards or whatever, okay. right? So I'm the opening presenter on the National Junos. I'm the first person you see when they did the opening for the Junos. I'm the first presenter that came up or whatever, oh, if, you, wow. if, if you ever checked that year or whatever. So I was nominated um, against Classified, uh, No Handouts. Mm. And No Handouts was a mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Like, No Handouts was a mixtape that I had done yeah. when I met Ray, you know what I'm saying? So like, it was one of those things. Like, even the idea of like, why was JD ever first, you know what I mean? Like. Mm. There's a million reasons for why J.D. Era was first. You know what I mean? Like, I had a mixtape that was done when Raekwon met me. I had distribution. I had been on the radio like crazy. I had a Foot Locker commercial. Mm -hmm. I had, you know what I'm saying? Like Everything was lined up. I had up. done shows from, yeah. the, everyone in the city could tell you I had done shows. You know what I'm saying? So, like, all the reasons were there for why I was up first. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. I just, um, I, I don't know. It just, it was one of those things where my regret was ever speaking out because I'm not really the type of person to run out and like, I don't really talk about much, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you don't do a lot of interviews. I don't do a lot of interviews like that. Nice yeah. Yourself. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to business, I, I definitely, it's, I keep it to myself, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And like, if it's within our family, within our camp, I keep it within that and I broke code on that, you know what I mean? I, I, I was outside of myself with that. And that was more because I was hurt, you know what I mean? Like, he went to breakfast club and they're like, yo, what's up with JDR or whatever? And he was just like, you know, like, I was, He's working and when you know when he does something then you know it'll be you know he just kind of wow. just kind of downplayed me you know i just felt like you know if you're a big homie like that was an opportunity to really big me up you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like yeah. you know the whole world's watching this is time yeah. to be like yo my man just came off a tour you know he got a, Ju a juno nominated album that's a canadian mm. grammy but you know what i mean you could have yeah, picked me up and I, a whole different way. that was one of a few things that you know what i mean just kind of like Damper things for me so a little yeah. bit. The, it's Ice Age, right? That's what Ice Age Two O. Is, is it still that label over here is now dissolved in Canada? As, as I know it, it's dissolved in Canada. You know, what I mean, yeah. I, I know they still got it in the U.S. And as long as you know Ray's around and like his brothers are around, it'll always be Ice Age Two O on the U.S. side. Mm. Um, but in Canada, it was a guy named Trini that was in charge of it over here. I'm not. I haven't seen Trini. You know what I mean? And like, I, I wish him the best. I hope when I see him, me and him could like, cause like you know, at the end of the day, like everyone's heart was in the right place. Like even mm -hmm. for like camel coming in you know what i mean like I, I really looked at it like okay i got black market my team you got deep waters raise ice h2o we're gonna bring this thing together you're from the east i'm from the west you know what i'm saying like this is a good opportunity to really um springboard for both of us you know yeah, what i'm saying and yeah, like yeah. I, I really was on board for the, for that and i was on board you're looking with, forward to working together. yeah you know what i mean like like we got records from the unexpected victory um album which was raekwon he did a mixtape and it's like me, Camel, Styles P, you know what I mean? Like, oh, wow. I, I, I would have never been on a record with Styles P if it wasn't for Raekwon, you know what yeah. I mean? I would have never been, some of these records that I got, like, I, I'm on a record, uh, Tony Touches, 50, uh, 50 Grade MCs, me, Ghostface, RZA, Raekwon. You know, Sick. What, Jay Era? You know what I mean? Like, you you know what I mean? Like, look at that lineup, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that is is priceless, you know what I mean? I got to check out stuff off of my bucket list, you know what I mean? it's like, growing up, I'm not sure how your age, but yeah. I'm pretty sure you grew up listening to Wu Tang. Oh, that's the story I told Ray when I first right? met him. My first rap I ever learned was Cream. Crazy. That, the, right? Literally, and I, I, I tell you, no, I wrote it down. That's my first rap I ever learned was Cream. So you know what I mean? To so, sit in a room with legends, yeah, like that, and then be on Tony Touch's 50 Greatest MCs with those type of mans, and be like, Did you sit in the room with the legends? Like, did you meet oh, yeah, like what? Ghost, all those different mans too? Me, I, you know I was the always saying? around these. No, I because was you could be doing something. No, I was with Ray all the time. You know, right? Listen to, listen to what the man's saying, yo. I went, Ray was my teacher. That was basically the little Shaolin. He was in the monastery of this hip hop. I went monastery. to the University of yeah, Wu Tang. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's so a, you went to the, U, to the Wu Mansion? Have you ever been there? I never been to the Wu. No, that was in LA. They had that in LA. That was like back in the day, though. That's not still. That's not still. Mm, like okay, yeah, yeah, that was after the Wu yeah, Mansion. Yeah, yeah. Unless, unless Rizza has his own. Because that's like a legendary place. That was back in the day. That yeah. was like in LA when they were recording or whatever. That was the Wu Mansion. But no, I met Papa Wu. I like. Crazy. Like, I mean. Like in terms of Wu Tang, I met everyone in the clip. Uh, rest in peace, ODB. He's the only person I didn't get to meet. Yeah, I met his yeah. son. You know what I mean? And like, like Rizza's been by the studio. And like, mm -hmm. like quick story. I remember when uh, Master Killer, uh, he got stuck at the border. Um, they were trying to get him in or whatever. And like Rizza Bishop called me. Was 
Bishop always with the random shit. Bishop always in, in a weird way. He's always connected to shit. <laughs> Bishop calls me one day out the blue and he's like, yo, Era, I got Rizza on the line. What the fuck are you talking about, Bishop? He's like, yo, Era, I got Rizza on the line. He needs a favor. Mm. Like, all right, cool. Goes the other line or whatever. I hear it's yo bong bong, yo, what's good? Yeah, you know, Rizzo, you know, I, yeah. you know what's Rizzo. As soon as you hear all that, he's like, yo, yeah. you know, he's telling me he got a situation, he's like, yo, I need you to go to the uh to the airport and go like uh draw some cash for Master Killer because they won't let him pay for it himself or whatever it is. Mm. So I shot over there quick to get him through or whatever, you know, like little stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like I just I'm super like blessed to have been around that just because that's what I loved. You know what I mean? Yo, like, like sure. that type of rap was the rap that I loved and I grew up with. So to be around those guys was priceless, man. You know what I mean? And I just, no, yeah. Facts. yeah, I learned like, I, I learned that I could rhyme with the best. You know what I mean? Like that was, I think that was the biggest takeaway from it. You know what I mean? Like I was and, just going to ask you that. What was the biggest lesson yeah, you learned I, from I, that? For me, it was just that self-confidence. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I, I, I went and don't get me wrong. Like in my mind, I've always been rapping with the best. You know what I mean? Because like, like when I rapped on songs with Drake, like, we were literally trying to bust each other's ass, you know what I mean, yeah. on these records. And I always considered those guys, like the guys around me, I always thought they were the best, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like really getting to rap with the Ghost Faces and the Raekwons and like the Styles P's and some of these guys, like it just gave me a different confidence, man. Like yeah. it just, it let me know like, yeah, you're supposed to do this. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you're on like, the level. I'm on the level. No one can tell me nothing. No one can say, yo, you know what I mean? Like, no one can make me second guess Back nothing. Back to your analogy. Yeah. From the NCAA to the league. To the league, man. Mm -hmm. that was, that's what it was. You right. know what I mean? And Mixed I got, tape, street ball. I got to see it. You know right. what I mean? Mixtapes, a street ball thing. Straight bang, up. Bang, bang. Now you're in the flipping, you know, you're, you're signing mm -hmm. deals. You're in the NCAA getting that contract. Mm -hmm. and boom, now you're in the league. Yeah. And, and that's what it was. You know what I mean? I got to the league and maybe the lights were a little bright. You know what I'm saying? And it was just kind of like, yo, there's a lot going on here. And, you know, it's it's not easy to zone in, you know, and, and I, I, got, I got a lot of respect for a lot of these kids that are now like, See, I was one of the first guys that was from Toronto that was running to the States to try and do stuff. Like, I, I remember I did, like, This Is 50 and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I was doing all this stuff prior to just on a hustle tip. I would go to New York with, like, if you see my This Is 50 interview, I'm there, just black tea, black shit. No one knows. I came straight from the airport with my bags in the Where office. 50 yeah. walked in the office, like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, I... I pull up like anyone knows me they know i pull up anywhere i'll sleep in a studio for a week if i have to you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so just i have a lot of respect for these kids that are like running to la right now and running to new york like we're talking about that pyrex kid like mm -hmm. signed his def jam deal like i Fox. love i love watching this stuff you know what i mean yeah. as a big homie like swagger right you have a track with swagger i, right? I love that kid man yes. that kid's energy i i just i gravitate to that kid's spirit you know what i mean like there's um there's 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 few like younger and not to call him a kid like he's a grown man you know what i mean yeah, but there's yeah, few yeah. younger younger artists that um that really like get it you know what mm -hmm. i mean and they're they they know who they are you yeah. know what i mean i think that's what it is he just he has like such a a self like a confidence about he knows exactly he knows who he is yep. you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and that took me a while you know what i mean to get there so to see it at like such a young age and even like with pressa like they know who they are you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, and i just i love to see that as a as a big homie you know what i mean yeah. What inspires you to make music now? Um, that mixtape I was listening to earlier was fire. Yeah, thank you, man. Yes, thank you. Was. Yeah, I gave, I gave, for the people that don't know, like I gave them an advance uh, listen on, on the album Back From The Dead. You know what I mean? This is just a little warm up. Uh, like I was telling you, it's super light warm up as, as to what I'm doing. It should be out for June 7th. Mm -hmm. um, worst case, the 14th, but the 7th uh, is... Ah, uh, the 14th. Yeah, yeah push yeah. to the 14th. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, say, what, yeah, is that yeah. birthday? Earth yeah, yeah, Earth Okay, Strong. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it should be out the 7th, but yeah, it might, it might yeah, end up the 14th. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, Maybe on the 14th. But um, uh, yeah, I'm man, I, uh, what motivates me now, honestly, um, I'd say legacy at this point. Mm, you know what I mean? Just because like legacy, when we talk legacy. about it, we talk about this, like that mixtape, because of that mixtape gap, that 10 years of banging mixtapes and mm -hmm. only guys like you guys really appreciate what I did, you know what I mean? There's a whole gap of people that don't. So for me, this next couple of projects and albums is really about letting them know how good I am, yeah. you know what I mean? As opposed to it being like, oh, era was good, you know what I mean? It's like, nah, my nigga, like, I do this in my sleep. Like, this is, this yeah. is still easy to me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think... Uh, that's not what motivates me, man. Legacy, straight up. See, that's the same thing Maestro yeah. said. Mm. Legacy. Mm. That's the same thing Maestro said. He gets it. And Maestro, I talk to Maestro all the time. You know what I mean? He's like, 
Mike's just another mentor of mine. Like he's a guy that I'll call if I got an idea or I just want to pick someone's brain on something or like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just kind of, he's, he's someone I'll hit up and he always gives me an honest opinion, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and I love him for that because he, Maestro don't got to take no one's call. Like realistically, no, Maestro's a, a super, super man. legend. Yeah. Maestro the first, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's the GOAT, the OG GOAT, you know what I mean? Like don't drink the GOAT now, but Stroh's the guy, you know what yeah, I mean? That yeah. Originally, so um, right. for him to kind of pick up his call, I always big up that guy, man. Yeah. With the way that the scene has come up now, mm-hmm. right? What's one of your favorite things about it, and what's one of the things that you don't like about it? Um, with the scene now, mm-hmm. um, I like, I like how easy it is for, um, these Toronto kids like that are hitting a million views. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I, I love, I love the amount of Toronto artists there are now. Like, like I, the idea that a Toronto artist can go to the U.S and it's not a thing yeah like when i was first going to the u.s i got the it was the worst i go there and it's you're from where oh, oh toronto? Toronto, toronto oh who's that guy cardinal official uh, and who you got chaos like it was the worst you know what yeah, i mean because yeah. it was like yo my nigga like yeah we have that and i love cardi but it's like listen to my music you know what i mean like just mm, take my take music it in take my music just listen to it for what it is and and a lot of people like i remember i went to lenny s's um office like this was back back in the day i went to his office mm-hmm. and i i waited downstairs at def jam until they let me in and i finessed my way into def jam and then i brought him my cd and i played him music and he was like pleasantly surprised he was like oh shit like you're from toronto you know what i mean like what i love now is that these kids don't have to go through that yeah. you know what i mean like like i and 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 you know it's not it's not because of me you know what i mean but mm, i, I had something part, to do i had something to do with it, it you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I definitely like you had, said there's a crack in the door. You're getting I'm telling through you. It. I'm telling you. Oh, that's right? why I specialize in my nigga. Right? You give me a so, crack, I'm gonna get through that fucking door. You yeah. know. But but it's one of those. That's I love that about it. What I hate about the Toronto scene is that um, these kids still haven't figured out how to monetize it. Mm. And and I feel like there's a lack of like uh, managers. Like like that's a a big conversation I have. Like I think there's a lack of like um, those middlemen to take the hits and like monetize it for these kids you know what i'm saying like there's yeah. there's a lack of like solid managers that are like okay like like banana like i don't know if you know banana like coach is sick with it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's sick with it what he's doing with some of these kids and like moving them and taking them out to europe and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that like that's super dope like we need more guys like that that are for the culture that are like okay you know what this little street kid from wherever whatever hood you're from you got a banger and you got yeah. talent you know what i mean you just need someone to believe in you and someone who's gonna take you and show you the ropes and someone you can trust shout out banana coach yeah, yeah yo, straight yeah, up yeah. man straight up you know someone you can trust like i, I think i think that's super important you know what i you mean you have but, to have someone you can trust in your yeah, corner and, and, yeah and and not necessarily so like the knowledge homie, yeah. you know what i mean not necessarily like my boy that i you know because that's all i ever had all i ever had was like my friends around me and we mm-hmm. made it work you know what i'm saying like we did the best we could, you know, to start our own label and to be managers and to kind of wear those executive hats. But yeah. it takes sometimes it takes a nigga that went to business school, you know what I'm saying, that knows what the fuck he's doing, you know what I mean, to do that for you, you know what I mean? But so, also yeah. a key point that you made too is you have mentors. Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys don't have mentors. Well, a lot of them don't want them either. Exactly, but that's, that's <laughs> you know what that, I mean? that was yeah. another step. Out. That's another thing I was gonna say. Yeah, like the mentorship is something they're not even thinking about, looking towards, and. Like the ghost in the room said, a lot of people are focused on being rappers. Mm -hmm. No one is focusing about the back end jobs. Mm -hmm. And and, and that's the disconnect, you know what I mean? So it's like, for me, I see a million views on some of these things and I'm like, that's amazing. But like, you haven't even been to Edmonton. You know what I mean? To do a show. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a gang of kids in Edmonton and Calgary and Saskatchewan that are listening and that watching are, your video. That are driving up those millions that of views. That are running up your views. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just kind of like just connecting those dots. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone being there to really help, some help them connect Some of them do that. understand. Some mm-hmm. of them do know how to connect. Mm-hmm. And some of them have connected. But majority, like you said, they don't. And it's, gonna, it's, a, it's a, a growth period. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. When I started, I didn't know the first thing about that i always tried don't get me wrong i was always a guy that like for example i i remember being young and calling clubs up and being like yo listen i'll come perform for free you know what i mean just yeah. set it up in edmonton and in calgary and, and then i'd go and then by the time i came back the second time so i was like yo i'll give you a thousand dollars to come perform my nigga you know what mm. i mean like and it's like okay shit like uh, you know so yeah. it's like sometimes it takes you doing that yourself you know what i mean for it to get there you know what i mean but yeah, man, I, I think that's the one thing that I, I don't like about the scene that I wish we had more of. And I, and I yeah. wish, you know, I wish some of these labels would take more chances, you know what I mean, on, on some of these kids. Because obviously we don't have a lot of, like, big independence, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, we don't have the cash money, or not the cash money, but, like, we don't have a lot of, like, 
the, the independence that the U.S. has, you yes. know what I mean, that can do things for some of these kids. So I think um, it's up to some of these major labels, and it's like they want to get on board when these kids are already stars, you know what yeah. I mean? So they don't want to take the chances mm-hmm. on their way up. Taking the chance is a big thing, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions. How we're, we're good with cams, uh, Savvy? Okay, so a couple more questions. I always ask this murder rate question after guest after guest after guest, mm-hmm. and I feel like I just want to keep on asking it again because the tapestry of what we're getting from all the different guests of their answers, it really, I feel, helps us get closer to the solution that we're looking for, right? Mm-hmm. So last year, we had 2018 which was like the highest murder rate since 2000 or that's 1991. That's summer of the gun or whatever so it was? No, no, 2000, 1991 was the highest. No, 2005, said. it's okay. Yeah, but was, 2005 was, was the murder rate more than gun. that summer of the gun last year? Was it more, more yeah. than that summer yes. of the gun? We almost touched 100 homicides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but that's not all, but also we had like the van attack. Oh yeah, that updated a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a couple masks. A couple of stuff like that, but overall, gun violence murder in the city was high right it was at an all time high Mm -hmm. like even higher than New York at one point our murder rate was right right? which is not nothing to brag about at all right so So Friday has the question I have for for that now is what can we do in 2019 to not repeat the murder rate that we had in 2018 (sighs) man that's that's like a loaded question like uh, I mean so look, the problem you're having is is a every kid got a gun right now is what it feels like, right? And our when I was younger, the accessibility of guns. Yeah, yeah, when I was younger, it was accessible. Don't get me wrong. If I if I wanted a gun, I could get a gun. But I I just don't think I don't think our mentality was the same. Like I just feel like these youngins now they got a chip on their shoulder a little bit. And like the internet has added to it. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like, like I don't know how to explain it. I feel like the internet and all this Instagram and this clout chasing and like, or, or that's what they call it. Like they call it clout chasing, right? Mm-hmm. Like all that stuff. I feel like it's added to it because now it's like, like I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. You can't stop it, man. I, I don't know how to stop it. You're asking. It's, you're it's asking, a tough you're question. Asking me to, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It's it's a it's super unfortunate. And to say things like you know they need more community things and you know more community centers and stuff like that i don't know if that's the answer because yeah. at the end of the day if you want to be a bad man you're going to be a bad man you know what i mean mm-hmm. if you grew up watching bad man and that's what you want to be that's what you're going to try and be you know yeah. and trying to emulate you know what i mean but when i was younger we had big homies and we respected our big homies you know what i mean and mm-hmm. i like like i see one of my big homies the other day who, who just came out you know what i mean i was just so happy to see him but like i just i still had that respect for him you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. I, I never lost that respect for him. like like, I don't know, I just feel like maybe some of these youngins don't really have big homies that they listen to or that they look up to, you know what I mean? Like, mentorship's a really important thing, you know what I mean? Like, why I never was really a, a bad mind kid was because I had really good mentors, you know what yeah. I mean? I had really good people, I had people that I looked up to that, you know, had good jobs and, like, that didn't come from money, you know what I mean? But worked their way to get money, you know what yeah. I mean? And to me, that's super inspiring. Like, I'm, I'm an African kid, you know, I, I grew up in an African household where my parents... You know, they came from Ghana to Canada with nothing. You know what I mean? So for me, you know what I mean? I I just have a different appreciation. You know what I mean? I I think maybe some of these kids don't have that same appreciation. Maybe Mm. they... I don't know. I don't know, man. It's it's just kind of sad to see. Like, I I watch this stuff all the time. I watch it on the news. And, you know, I'll be at the crib with my mom. Or not at the crib with my mom. Like, I'll go back to my mom's house. And, like, I'll be watching TV with her and, like, seeing this stuff. and, And for her, she watches it. And she's seeing me. You know what I mean? For her, she's seeing little black kids. And it just... It clicks to me, you know yeah. what I mean? I don't have no kids, you know what I mean? But I understand that, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it, it's just kind of sad. It's like, they need more things to do, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe that's it. I think jobs is a big thing. I was a person, I went to university, I did everything right that I could, and I still couldn't get a job, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I did all the things, all the, be a good kid, and, you know, st- yeah. play sports, and, you know, I did all that stuff. Doesn't and, necessarily and, equal and out. And I came out, and I still couldn't get a job, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know maybe that's another thing you know that you know these kids don't want to work at wendy's you know what i mean but maybe some of these better paying jobs would help would help some of these kids you know what i mean because yeah. it, 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 you know when you're getting a steady check um you don't think about fast money like it's not the same you know what mm-hmm, i mean mm-hmm. like it, you know the idea of of money changes you know what yeah. i mean and i can now afford to buy a car and get car insurance and you know what i mean stuff yeah. like that as opposed to i gotta sell a couple bounces 
to be able to pay my rent. You know, like yeah. sometimes some of the things, the thing that bothers me about a lot of these shootings is like um, the money, the amount of money that they're doing it for. You know what I mean? And like, I know when they get 27 and 29 and, and a little bit older, they're going to look back and be like, and I was stupid. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just some of them aren't even going to make it there because they're just so wild. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's unfortunate. I wish I had an answer, fam. I, I really yeah. do. Friday has a theory mm. about squashing three out of five beefs. Thank you. Like small Sorry, beefs. I got a little, got a little cooking in here. Yeah, it gets hot, the lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, that's yeah. what it is, the light. But um, he has this theory. Or is what is it? Squash. Well, if we squash one out of every five beefs, mm. we could bring down the murder rate by thirty percent. Yeah, but how do you squash them? It, it, like, if you don't listen to big homies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because essentially, when I was younger, that's how beefs got squashed. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it wasn't between the the two sixteen year old kids that were hotheads. You know what I mean? Facts. There was a there was a nineteen or twenty year old kid that was like, "Yo, you stupid idiot, stop that!" You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh, like, I don't want to get beat up by homie. You know what I mean? So. All right, let me cool out. You know what I mean? But yeah. like now it's like, I'll shoot that guy in his face. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I'm not telling this kid nothing. Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what? He's yeah. nuts. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like, I got love for these youngins. You know what I mean? But like, it's no, like, No, but you know, you're right. Niggas no, ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah. I, I like, yeah. RIP my big homie Juice. Like, that's the reason why I've squashed a beef with someone. Because mm -hmm. man was like, yo, you guys are from the same block. Yeah. Every time I see you guys, you guys are always arguing. It's like two fucking pit bulls on a leash yeah, yeah. And I, I you guys are my brethren i it's don't like, want this about i don't want to see you guys like this yeah i don't want to come to your funeral you know what i'm saying, you know and, what I'm saying? and my my homie passed away and i'm like yo I, I don't even want like i don't even like it's not even worth it mm, yeah and, and my homie didn't want to see us do that so you know what on the strength of my homie i'm done with that yeah you know I'm gonna and, let that go and like Probably that changed the trajectory of where shit happened. A lot of you things, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and it t but it takes that, right? Like it takes it takes someone to be the bigger man, and it's not always easy to be the bigger man. And I understand that, you know what mm. I mean? Because there's been situations where I, I could have been the bigger man and I wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, yeah. it takes someone to be the bigger man, you know. At but the end if, of the day, if it wasn't for my bigger homie, yeah, I probably would have still had that beef. But you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like for me, that's what it's always. That's always been the thing for me. Like I've always respected older homies you know what i mean and they and and they've always and they were they were good like mentors you know what i mean like don't get me wrong they did bad things but at the heart of it you know what i mean they still looked after the younger homies yeah. you know what i mean and like i don't know if it's maybe my generation isn't doing that with some of these young guys you know what i'm saying maybe we turned a blind eye when we when we should have been maybe helping raise some of these kids mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and like maybe that's why they feel like you know what i mean like i'll shoot that guy in his face because we yeah. didn't when you guys were starving, we didn't help you guys eat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I get that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like self-destruction, right? Like, you know, that's... at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're just, we're literally just self-destructing. And you said it at the beginning of the show where you're saying, where you're telling us to travel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, stamp your passport. You know, when you leave your block, when you leave Toronto, you know what I mean? Like, like even if you can't leave the country go to mm. vancouver yeah you know what i'm saying leave yeah. toronto fly to vancouver for a week you know what i'm saying if, if you can you'll figure out yeah. go check the vibes out you know what i mean and it'll just give you just a whole nother perspective you know what i mean because even just in vancouver like that west coast vibe it's just more chill you know mm -hmm. what i mean and like you just get to see more and like i just think getting these kids out and maybe maybe that's another thing you know what i mean maybe we got to start like taking these kids out a little bit more like creating some more community stuff like like yeah. that's one of my my big things when i'm done with rapping you know what i mean like that's one of the things i really want to do more community work like mm. i've always been one like you know i do stuff for like autistic kids any youth day whatever like i'm there if you call me to perform i always showed up throughout my whole career i've always been one to show up for community work yeah. you know what i mean but you know as I go along, you know, I mean, that's definitely like one of the focuses that I, I really want to have. That's next on the horizon. 100%, man. 100%. Okay. That's next on. And, and, and it, like, you know, I always thought about getting into the management stuff, but like as I go on and on, like I just feel like my calling is more towards like community work and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really like helping people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just kind of where I feel like I'm going to end up. You that's know, where so, you gravitate. Mm -hmm, dope, mm -hmm. dope. Shady era. Yeah, man. Yo, fucking it's going to be here, dog. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yo, and, yeah. And, and for the people that are like, yo, era's up here, he got a record called Smoking Good. Flip flows and I get dough and I get shows and I get hoes and I get molding.
good. You know what I'm saying? He got all these weed records. He hasn't hit the blunt. I'm yeah. just, let me put my disclaimer out there. Yeah. I started a detox as mm. of May 1st. So, like, I'm, what, six, seven days in as of right now. You know, I don't want to date the interview, but I'm a couple days in right now. I yeah. feel good. I'm trying to go for a month. I never stopped smoking since I started smoking, you know what I mean? So this is just a personal detox just to see if I can, you know what I'm saying? So allow me, don't get in the comments getting all crazy about <laughs> why the air firing up nothing. Whereas, but I brought some blunts, I brought some weed for the homies, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So you know, you know, just so you know, I'm still, sm- you know, I still, I still come with the fires. The man came through with the stout, I'm so happy. man came through with the dark stouts. You know, so, and that's the only reason Rush, I'm drinking, because I'm not really cream. a drinker, you know? Yeah. Pablo Escobar, so, the man came to hats. Yeah, you know, I want to, you know, north, you know north, and that's the new label, you know what I'm saying? Up North Records is the new record label. Okay. And right now it's just me, you know what I'm saying? I I, I don't want to even think about anyone else. Yeah. I can't think of another artist. Mm-hmm. I can't. From like some of the, some of the shoot, we've been shooting the videos. The, so the first, the first singles are... Uh, uh, Back from the Dead is the name of the record. It's mm-hmm. featuring uh, Ox. So Louis Rankin, if you know if you know Ox from Belly mm-hmm. and Shatas, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's featuring him. And uh, we shot the video like three parts. So I did it in three days. It's three different days of shoots or whatever. And like the first shoot with him was crazy. We got the white uh, Rolls Royce and shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that video is going to be the first one that we, we lead it off with. I dropped Bankroll. Bankroll was just like a little warm up. Just wide open for a nigga if it's real then let me know i've been grinding all winter had to come up off the snow swipe boys and yeah, let people know i'm alive you know what i'm saying yeah, like the, what what friday would say that the, the other baddies in the video yeah yeah you know i had a couple you know i had to have a that couple homegrowns i had a couple <laughs> homegrowns in there you know what i'm saying they've been doing their squats you know yeah. you know, <laughs> you know so um but, recognized but yeah that's just one of that's part of the growth you know what i mean like for me like that was one of the big disconnects even for me in the past like i've always felt like my music's been really good but like some of my videos been all right you know what mm. i mean like and i just wanted to like that was part of me taking a step back like even the progression of videos is crazy you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. when i started like the, if, go look at paper chase for respected in the places that you can't go my windows down sitting pretty in the range row trying to get the same ride. looking from the outside all you people if you've just heard of jd era go type in jd era paper chase mm. and you'll see the quality of that video when i started that was what an independent video that is a good independent video oh my yeah, that's like over a decade ago over a decade ago super budget but them times if you didn't get a grant you were fucked you know what right, i'm saying you right. were dead in the water right. and and it, and it was the worst system because it was like okay grant you set up an album you got your first single for the album you submit for the the first single it takes a month for it to come back they say no what do you do <laughs> you, yeah. you know what i mean that process of you know what i mean you put out the single and still how long but can you re- before you can reapply well, you can you, every every okay. every round you're allowed to apply. You know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like it takes a month for the next round or whatever. So if you're a man who my album's coming out in April and I didn't get that April one, now yeah. it's May and I gotta reapply in May and then it's not until June that I might get it. But it, so I, it's it's one of those things. You yeah. know what I mean. So the game has changed so and much. Then on top of that you might have filmed your video in a certain format and then mm-hmm. they want you to change it to a different oh, archaic yeah, gotta, format mm-hmm. that they're using to play on much music at one at that one point yeah it was like the, the, the what is it the, not the um, oh the i forgot beta, what they the it yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, uh, for the record i was a man that was smart enough to know yeah but they were using to have the beta right but, yeah, they, but that's what they were doing still. though you they would you would come and certain men were like oh you got to convert it to beta yeah, you gotta convert it. yeah what what do you mean convert yeah, it to you beta you gotta go pay to convert it and then oh to beta if you don't know is the lower function like lower quality yeah, yeah, yeah. So you spent money to get a high quality video. Now they're telling you and you have to you convert it you. to beta. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just the pro- the the progression of, of videos. You know, what I mean, it just allows it allows artists to be a little more creative. And like some of these young directors are incredible, man. Like oh. like the kid. Um, I, I want to give him a shout out. Sava uh, Motion Beaver. He goes by a mm-hmm. uh, 19 year old kid, and uh, he's the one who's shooting that back from the dead video with Ox. You know, what I mean, I trusted him with, and and the kids just. He's just impressed me so much, you know what I mean, with his yeah. knowledge of cameras and his knowledge of editing and all that. Like it's like where these kids are at now with some of this stuff is it's like it's crazy, man. Yeah, you know man, what I mean? Next like level. Yeah. young geniuses, man. Some of these kids are young geniuses. Yeah. So Toronto's come a long way, man. Toronto's definitely come Super a long facts. fucking way. Super facts. Well, listen, man. 
We got, we yeah. got. We could talk forever, man. You know, I'm gonna come back. Well, I'll come I wanna, back another well, time. I want to hold you just for a quick more, a quick more. Okay, more. okay. okay. We have something that we have called Smoke and Mirrors. Okay, bet. Okay. And for the people who are tuning into the Smoke and Mirrors segment, we have JD Era in the building. Hey, 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 you know hey. what I'm 